Steve Steve Daly. Steve Daly is also a leaseholder uh, at Royal Artillery Keys in uh, South East London, a part of town I know quite well. Uh, actually, I'm guessing Steve, you're on you're on as a sufferer. Sorry, leaseholder, uh, but you're, <laughs> you're also one of those people who's probably stared at computers and read so much you could probably have a PhD in this thing now. Well, I've. I've done more than that. I've stared at the annual reports of the top 10 builders, and they've made £43 billion over the last 10 years. Yet the government want to uh, propose a cap of just £2 billion over the next 10 years to let them off for defective buildings. Now, does that sound like a good deal to you, Eddie? Right, so let's go back, right? Because because I'm not doing my job properly today. Because I'm getting, I'm, I'm, no, well, no, I'm not. Because I, I've, I've just gone on this course about impartiality and all of that, okay. and I've not been particularly impartial today because it doesn't make any <laughs> sense to me. I live in the real world, and I have to make things make sense. So I want to take a moment. So I. I was one of the people who was affected because I did go to, down to Grenfell Tower and this programme has been there and we were there when smoke was coming from that building and where people were crying in the street. So for me, this story, because it is from Grenfell, that's the genesis of it, is a real one for me. It, it impacts me, I feel it, right? So when I was doing the show, I had a, an architect called Arnold Tarling and Arnold said to me, and I always remember this, that actually, we like to think of criminality and we like to think that somebody has got malintent. But the actual systems, the actual governance and the actual rules that were put in place, they were wrong. And people were doing what they could uh, or what they were allowed to do. Let, let's start there, shall we? And then you and I can have a conversation mm. that might inform everybody else as to why this is such a big story. Tell, tell me what you know about that, Steve. Well, I'm glad you started with the defects because that's what it comes down to. So the government set out some regulations that uh, they update every few years. And uh, when a building is built, it's got to comply to the regulations in force at the time of construction. Now, um, in my personal case at Royal Artillery Keys, um, we managed to get £1.3 million pounds out of uh, the developer um, because they didn't conform to those rules. Um, we not, not, e another... not even the rules that weren't fit for purpose. The, the building regulations. Yes. Yeah, so it was a defective building, a dangerously defective building. And they realised that and they paid up the money after we did a Twitter campaign and exposed some of their handiwork. But uh, we've obviously got more problems and we, through a lot more campaigning, managed to get that developer to turn up at Royal Artillery Keys. They were trying to clear their name and found even more problems um, again, breaches of the building regulations. So this is what it comes down to. Did the buildings get uh, developed properly and did they meet the building regulations? Um, now, if they didn't, why are the developers being let off with a two billion cap, which is what the government are proposing, when they've made £43 billion over the last 10 years? They shouldn't just have a cap. They should pay in full. Because it's free market enterprise and because we're a capitalist mm. state where people can do it and they didn't know what that, that they were doing. Nobody uh, knew there was a mistake because it was deregulated, regulated, wasn't it, this industry in terms of uh, checking fixtures, fittings and the like. In terms of where you are, mm. you guys seem like you're pretty well organised. Tell mm. me about the organisation, because this will speak to other people listening who might be yeah. in a block, who might not have uh, the WhatsApp group, who might not have the person who was a trainee solicitor, or who might not have the anorak called Steve, who studies it <laughs> day and night. So <laughs> what, what, what did you do? What have you done? Well, A, I have a nice blue anorak, but that's by the by. Um, well... Firstly, get together with a group of uh, six or seven. Don't make it too big. Um, and then you've got to look at a few things. So every uh, Grenfell is all about the external wall. So the cladding is basically a kind of insulation um, that goes on the outside of the building. Now, it comes with a safety certificate. It's called a BBA certificate. And you can check to see if your uh, external wall meets those building regulations I talked about. Is it built? in a correct way or is it is it built dangerously you can find that out by checking the certificate that's the external wall teddy and then internally you've got something called fire stopping which is basically when there's a pipe going through the wall say from the, over your front door out into the hall 
in these uh, communal blocks with flats. Um, they sh- it should all be sealed up to stop a fire, you know, going out from the hallway into the into the flat or vice versa. Those two things most builders will fail on, and that's basically what's happened in Parliament over the last um, few days. Dr Fox has put forward an amendment which basically um, says if the builders... This is Liam, comply, this is Liam Fox, right? Yes, that's right, Dr Liam Fox. He's, he's come up with a revolutionary solution, and it's basically saying apply the same principles as we do for contaminated land. And that, that was just for your listeners. Yeah. If you, you know, pollute some land um, as a developer and then someone builds some flats, the leaseholders shouldn't have to pay for clearing up that land if it's later been found to be dangerous. So what Dr. Fox is saying is apply the same existing legislation, don't reinvent the wheel, to the building safety crisis. So what we're saying is um, where you've got those building regulations that haven't been complied with by the developers, they cut corners, they did a sh- really rubbish job, um, they should be made to pay in full and not let off with these silly caps that the government are coming up with. That's what Dr Fox is saying. And you'll hear in the media, the polluter must pay. It's referring to this contaminated land. However, the government are not that interested in letting the polluter pay. They want to let them off with the two billion levy. And this is what comes back to that point I made when you first started talking. They've made 43 billion over 10 years. The government says, let them off with two billion for all of this mess that they've caused. And uh, we're not, the, Dr. Fox has gone further and he said, there's bills coming in, 6,000 a year, maybe 10,000 a year to leaseholders on interim measures. That's these 24 7 fire wardens you hear about. That's the insurance increases of 1,000% and so on. That's terrorizing people, putting their mental health at risk. There's two suicides that are being reported. This needs to stop. So Dr. Fox has said, let's take away the sting of the enforcement and put in something called forfeiture protection, which basically just means the courts can't take the house off you if you don't pay your service charge. So his amendment was vital. The government had a it wasn't just it wasn't just his amendment, was it? I was listening this morning, taking the children to school to Vanessa Phelps oh, yeah. at, at breakfast. Take take a listen to Baroness Pinnock. This oh. is not of their making. The leaseholders are the innocent victims in all this. They've done everything right and nothing wrong, and the government really does need to come up with a scheme that protects them from enormous bills. So that's Baroness Pinnock. I'm yeah, chatting to, to Steve Day. Uh, this is BBC Radio London. I just want to, I just want to clear the date. I've asked our producer to clear the date for a few minutes, and I want people to phone up. I want to talk about cladding now. Yeah. So it, 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 here's somebody who's managed with his team, with the people that live around him, and we'll find out your exact situation in a little mm. while, Steve, and uh, mm. to get somewhere, to get some kind of understanding. If you're at your wit's end, if you're worried about paying money, if you're worried about being bankrupt, where are you going to go? What are you going to do? Mm. Then maybe it's a great time to give us a call. We'll, we'll, we'll deal with it now. The number 0800 731 2000. You can text 81333, starting your message with the word London, and emails to Eddie. Dot nestor at bbc at dot co dot uk. Uh, w- one of the questions, Steve, and and, and, mm. and you know w- we're talking as though there's still a little fight in this thing, and I'm and I'm glad because we don't fight. right. Well, be, 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 because when I listened <laughs> this morning, plans. right, the, when I listened plans. this morning, I thought it was all over, but but, well, but actually, just right, things. great, right. So what I don't understand, I had a lot of building work done about a year and a half ago, just before the okay. thing, and every time we. I don't know, we did something with the kitchen, we did something with the back, we did something with the loft, we did... Every time, we, we in before we moved on, somebody from the council had to come and sign it off. Now, mm. that's a, 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 a dwelling, in the, a, you know, personal, it's a family dwelling, right? How mm. is it that we can have structures built post-2012 which are now... Uh, not fit for purpose, which are now costing people anxiety, pain, hardship in the time of COVID. How is that possible? Well, it's there's two. So that's a very interesting um, problem. So what you're referring to is building control. And this is where you have those regulations I talked about. So whenever you make a change in your house, they uh, bring in the building control to check the plans and to check um, that it would uh, conform to the law. Um, and that's what they're doing when they come to your house. 
But what happened post Grenfell, and this is where people have got into the trap, um, they tighten those regulations. So um, existing external wall systems that were deemed um, safe pre-Grenfell are now deemed unsafe post-Grenfell. So we've got two lots of people. We've got people in buildings that were defective. We say the builders should pay for that, or the developers, or the contractors, or even the cladding manufacturers if they fudge the tests, like we see in a Grenfell inquiry. That should be the polluter pays. The other group where, you know, the um, buildings were deemed um, safe at uh, construction, but because of Grenfell, the regulations change and are now deemed unsafe, then that should come from the public uh, money because the um, taxpayer is basically representing the regulations and unfortunately... They weren't, fit, a regulation they weren't issue. fit for purpose. That's right. Uh, let, let, let's talk to some people and, and share, yeah, the, yeah. share their love, Steve. Thanks so much. Mm-hmm. Jessica is in town. It's afternoon to Jessica. Hi, how are you doing? I'm all right. Say hello to Steve. Hello, Steve. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Hello. Tell me your story, please, Jessica. Um, Well, we're kind of in a difficult position in that we we found out that our building, which has 559 apartments in Poplar, um, which is coated in ACM cladding, um, obviously we were, we've been waiting for the cladding to be removed and we've literally just now recently found out that just a couple of weeks before work is due to commence and the cladding is supposed to be removed and the timber balcony is changed, we're now being told, oh, and you've got to pay for waking watch. Um, so it's heartbreaking. It's it's really sad. And obviously we've all been watching the debates in, in the Commons and it going back and forth. And it's just unbelievable. I, I'm lost for words. Um, it, it's scary. It's sad. We feel very much out of the loop. I have no idea still what kind of costs I'm expected to pay because we've been asking for an update from our freeholder and we still don't know. Well, I can tell you something you can do there. So if you're not getting information out of your freehold or your managing agent, there's something mm-hmm. you can do. Dame Judith Hackett, that's H-A-C-K-I-W-T. Yes. Just quote that it. in an email. You say to right. your managing agent and you say, the Hackett review says all uh, responsible persons, that's your managing agent um, yeah. or your freeholder, have to divulge the full fire safety defect documentation for your uh, property and they have to then send it over. If they give anything like client privilege as a reason, you just quote that mm. at them and they will hand it all over. Um, yeah. I really recommend doing that. And and That's ask so for your helpful. accounts. Ask for the justification of the waking watch as well. Yeah. You know, the London yeah. Fire Brigade may have, you know, issued a an order under the fire safety orders, but they, they don't did. specify how many. Now exactly. find out who said how many because that's really this key. Is it. I think the sad part is nice bit of money out of it, couldn't they? Yeah, absolutely. And I think what the sad part is with our freeholders who do notoriously have a terrible reputation up and down the country, um, is that it is it is distressing because you email and you ask for this information and you're very cooperative. And I mean, I recently emailed about three weeks ago. I still not had a reply, and and it's sad and it's and it's hard work. Let, let me stop you of, there, Jessica. You know, sorry, it, yeah. in the, in the spirit of kind of fairness. I wouldn't want to pay it if I was a freeholder either. I didn't do anything no. wrong. I, 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 didn't, no. I didn't do anything wrong. I, I was adhering to the regulations as they were stipulated. It, it, it's come sure. to pass that something is wrong. I'm really sorry, Jessica. Uh, but I, I, I've got to say, I wouldn't be volunteering to pay for it. No, of course not. But I think what's interesting about all of this and what keeps coming up that's infuriating is how ministers can stand in Parliament and say, oh, this mustn't fall on the taxpayer. Now, that's interesting because leaseholders are taxpayers. Not only are we taxpayers, we pay our rising soaring service charges, which are often so very oh, unjustified. We've done, whole, we've done whole programs on that as well. Uh, I mean, that's just been yeah. superseded by this, but we've done programs on that. There's, there's no kind of, uh, you know, we haven't had our accounts since 2018. So we're, we're years behind and we don't know what's happening, which I also believe is... Is, is illegal, that, that shouldn't be happening, but it is. And it's sad that I feel, you know, the, the argument has very much been, well, taxpayers shouldn't pay, and I understand that. But at the same time, the freeholders, who are the ones who are owning these buildings, becoming wealthier and wealthier, and the only innocent party is now actually the one being made bankrupt 
feeling suicidal, you know, having no, all of these negative don't, impacts. Don't. The, the, the reason for doing this show to Je Jessica and the way that we are doing this uh, show, and you just heard from Steve earlier, is to give mm -hmm. people like you hope. It is not over. It is only over uh, when we stop trying, and I don't think anybody's going to stop uh, trying. Hopefully you will have uh, gained something from what Steve uh, told you that you could do there, Steve. And, and you hear it, you know. Th these are desperate times, even without any of this. Uh, people are up and down. I am with the whole COVID thing. Where am I going to go? What am mm. I going to do? Am I going to have a job? Am I going to be able to pay for things? I don't feel right. Anxiety about going out. And if you put all of this in the very place that's supposed to be your sanctuary, i.e. your home, uh, it, it means that people like Jessica are having an understandably tough time. Absolutely. And I, and I do think there is an interesting point there. You mentioned the freeholder, but some freeholders were subject to the original contract with the builder and took a joint responsibility of uh, no. so, you know, ensuring the regulations are complied with. So there are some freeholders that have a hand in this. And so uh, there is a distinction on the freeholder too. If people check their leases, they can see if they've got a freeholder that should be contributing or an innocent one, as you say. What should everybody who is a leaseholder, uh, be doing now? What What is one thing that, before you leave us? And thank you for, I don't think you were expected to be taking calls with me, but, you, you know. Well, I just we, want to help people. Well, well you... clearly, and we have to, and, and as a radio station, as a program, that's what we're here for as a local radio it's station. Too, so, yeah. so, but, but something doesn't feel right. But, but what I need from you, Steve, in this stage of, and clearly it's going to go on, what should everybody like Jessica consider doing as a result of, of that announcement and that vote and what happened? Well, so the national uh, view is to lobby the government, basically, and so on. But I don't think so. I, I actually think now the developers, the contractors, the cladding manufacturers, they need to be seen to pay for this. And if the government aren't going to, as in the Fox Amendment, which is very clear, those responsible should pay, if it's not going to be done by the government, then we need to take the uh, campaign to the developers. We should be en masse, as leaseholders caught up in this mess, and um, saying these builders are not building uh, correctly. Well. They don't take responsibility. Let's hit their bottom lines and let's say, don't buy new buildings, don't take help to buy public funding until you fix the buildings you've already built in the first place. And don't ignore your customers. Don't not write back when they tell how distressed they are with a £30 million bill. Show some respect for people that have built, bought their uh, homes in good faith and are now suffering mental health issues because of huge bills. You know, take some responsibility. So I would encourage every single leaseholder in the country to now take the fight to the developers, the cladding manufacturers, and everyone responsible. The polluter must pay, and if the government doesn't make them do it, the leaseholders should. Thank you very much, Steve. Look after yourself. Uh, we will definitely talk again. And I must say, before we go to those headlines, uh, having done that mayoral debate on Monday, I cannot help but think, uh, with our haste with... Uh, our intention of getting as many homes built as possible. I just wonder if there's...